Okay, my name is Sofia Wilcape and I'm from La Sinestación, Peru. Hello, Peru. Yay, hi. Hey, hi, how are you? Hi, Leo. Hey. How are you? Good, how are you? Doing very well, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm doing great. Good. <laughs> okay, so first of all, congratulations for the release of Sweet Tooth, which is having a very positive reception from the public and the critics as well. So... To start, the story is developed in a dystopian world in which there is a mortal virus around. And I wanted to know how the coronavirus context we're living in influenced your character creation processes. Well, I um, there's moments in the script that sort of reflect the um, what, what people were sort of going through, the sort of collective trauma that people are feeling sort of globally. And there's really sort of moments that I can sort of pick out in the script that I felt reflected that. And um, I suppose in those moments, you just hope that you're speaking from a place of humanity and truth. And then um, you hope that that's sort of felt by, you know, the audience. Um, uh, yeah, I suppose that's my answer. Yeah. What about Junio? Well, I would, you know, the great invisible hand that scripts our lives, I I don't think that we could have asked for uh, a a better scripted thing than, ooh, I'm going to have to be really careful about how I say this, but the advent of COVID and when it came along, it it really, from a narrative perspective, it was like, oh, wow, that's going in a completely strange direction. Right. So for me personally, it brought home the idea of I, I'd like to call it a beautiful fatalism. Uh, and I think it's about the understanding of breath and the significance of being able to breathe and a reminder that, you know, your breath counts. So approaching Sweet Tooth and the production at that particular time during COVID in lockdown in New Zealand. My approach was, I, I really don't know. I don't know two months in the future, let alone six months, let alone 10 years down the line. So I might as well give it everything I got. Really, you know, bring my faculty to the creation of this. So if that answers your question, it, it would be that on a cellular level, uh, I was very present and I knew exactly what was going on in the world each and every day whilst we were filming it. Okay, thank you. How could you not? Yeah, that's right. So now concerning your characters, I was wondering which aspect do you like like the most and the least about Dr. Singh and General Abbott? Oh, interesting, yeah. I think the thing I like about Dr. Singh the most is his uh, dedication to his sort of home life, you know, the need to keep everything going, like his love for this horse that's replaced his car and love for his wife and trying to keep the routine of that going, you know, playing chess and everything else. And it's a sort of thin line because that's also the thing that, it's his demise as well, like his inability, like it becomes so important that it stops him from, um, I don't know, maybe tiptoeing into the world of Abbott a little bit, you know? He's, he's trying to keep everything, keep the, his status quo going, but because of that, he's open to sort of being led astray in a sort of, morally weird area you know yeah i got it and what about you neil i love abbott's costumes and his toys his cars i love his costumes i love what they brought to his world with with the costumes the thing that i uh, probably dislike about him most is that he he still engages he thinks it's a good idea to perhaps have a discussion you know where I think you could, sort of, you know, just decimate. Don't even ask questions. You know what you're doing. Just, you know, get rid of them. These mongrels, hybrids. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's right. So we don't have time for more. So thank you so much. It was a pleasure thank talking you. to you. I hope you have thank a nice day. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you.